Welcome to fourth grade reading. I'm sorry. Um, this is lesson 159. <clears throat> we are looking at Trails to Explore, pages 277 to 301. Your homework for tonight is to study your vocab list six for the quiz that is tomorrow. I know that I backed that up a little bit, and so it's going to, um, it might have thrown you off to have two vocab quizzes in one week, but I did one on Monday, one on Friday, so um, then it'll just, it'll fall on Friday from, for the rest of the two weeks after that. So, um, so um, I'm going to quiz you on the vocab list like I've been doing the lesson before you take the quiz. So put that away um, and see how you can answer, if you can answer these, okay? So I want you to tell me what the definition to desire is. Okay, what's the definition to desire? It's to want or long for, to want or long for. Okay, very good. What about the definition to havoc? Havoc. Great destruction, great destruction, all right? Good job. Curiosity, what does that mean? Curiosity. A desire to know something, right? Desire to know something. What about profit? What does profit mean? The money left over after costs are covered is profit, okay? What about irritating, causing problems? What, what word means irritating, causing problems? Bothersome. What word means to struggle awkwardly? To struggle awkwardly. Flounder, good job. What about not busy? What word means not busy? Idle, idle, okay. Um, what does soft or light easily broken? What means soft or light easily broken? Delicate, delicate. All right, now I'm gonna switch again. What is the meaning of brute? Brute is what? A beast, very good. And what's the meaning of haphazard? Haphazard. And that's not planned or casual, okay? All right, I hope you did well with that. Um, I encourage you to, to look over that several times and maybe write it out again and just see what, um, just make sure that you know those really well for the quiz tomorrow. All right, we're gonna be looking at the story called The Elephant's Child. This is by Rudyard Kipling, and if you know that name, what other story did Rudyard Kipling write that's very famous? The Jungle Book, very good. All right, so how many stars are in the sky? Mm, why is the water blue? Why does Monday come after Sunday? Why do dogs bark? When you were younger, we all went through a stage of asking questions about everything. Some of you are still in that stage, I think. Um, just teasing. Today we'll read a story about a young elephant uh, that asked so many questions that his relatives pop him. But even that doesn't stop his questions, okay? All right. We know, of course, how the elephant got his long trunk, how the camel got his hump, now the rhinoceros got his baggy skin. God made them that way. It is funny though to read the humorous explanations Rudyard Kipling gives in his famous book, Just So Stories. Um, and so, yes, he, he has a way with, with writing stories, as you've probably noticed. In the high and far off times, the elephant, oh, belo oh best beloved, had no trunk. He had only a blackish bulgy nose as big as a, as a boot that he could wriggle about from side to side, but he couldn't pick up things with it. But there was one elephant, a new elephant, an elephant's child, who was full of satiable curiosity. Sorry, I got lost in that word. Um, insatiable curiosity or curiosity that can be never satisfied. 
Um, and that means he asked ever so many questions. He, and he lived in Africa and he filled all Africa with his insatiable curiosities. He asked his tall aunt, the ostrich, why her, tether, <laughs> why her t tail feathers grew just so. And his tall aunt, the ostrich, popped him with her hard claw. He asked his tall uncle, the giraffe, what made his skin spotty, and his tall uncle, the giraffe, popped him with his hard hoof. And still, he was full of satiable curiosity. He asked his broad aunt, the hippopotamus, why her eyes were red, and his broad aunt, the hippopotamus, popped him with her broad hoof. And he asked his hairy uncle, the baboon, why melons tasted just so, and his hairy uncle, the baboon, popped him with his hairy paw. And still, he was full of satiable curiosity. He asked questions about everything that he saw or heard or felt or smelled, smelt or touched, and all his uncles and aunts popped him. And still, he was full of satiable curiosity. One fine morning, this satiable elephant's child asked a new fine question that he had never asked before. He asked, what does the crocodile have for dinner? Then everybody said, hush in a loud and dreadful tone, and they popped him immediately and directly. By and by, when they were finished, he came up, came upon Colo, Colo, Colo bird sitting in the middle of, the, of a wait a bit thorn bush, and he said, my father has popped me, and my mother has popped me. All my aunts and aunt, uncles have popped me for my insatiable curiosity, and still I want to know what the crocodile has for dinner. Okay. I'm going to stop there because I'm going to let you read more of that. So um, you're going to read, you're reading to page 301. So let's, let's just see what other, you're going to finish this story. And then there are a few poems. So let me, so I'll tell you about those poems, okay? The elephant poem. When you see an elephant, you probably notice the huge trunk first. Not many people notice the elephant's small tail, okay? Then the hippopotamus, how many of you have se seen a real hippopotamus? Listen carefully to this funny poem to learn about a hippopotamus. Then the habits of a hippopotamus, the other poem is this funny poem explains some imaginary habits of a hippopotamus. And then you're going to read the story about Paul Bunyan, Northwoods Lumberman. There have been many legends passed down through the years in American history. One such legend is about a lumberjack, a lumberman named Paul Bunyan and his blue ox babe. Listen and see if you think some facts have been added to this story as it has been retold through the years. All right, the last thing you're reading is a poem called Mary Indoors. Have you ever been reading an adventure filled book and someone comes and asks you to play? It may be hard to stop reading your book. In the poem Mary, Indo Mary Indoors, Mary chooses to stay inside and read rather than go Go outside and play. All right. So I'll let you read those. And then um, when you're finished with that, make sure you study your vocab list six for your quiz tomorrow. We will see you in the next lesson.